How do you recommend change oil in low ambient temperatures? So if the oil is still consolidated into the right place, right? So meaning that whether it be in the reservoir, whatever the reservoir is, a lot of times we do use, especially with screws, we're using the oil separator as a reservoir. So it's kind of serving a dual purpose. Sometimes it may be an actual sump in the compressor. Uh, sometimes it may be an actual uh, separate cylinder from the oil separators and the compressor. And RTHD would be an example of that. Even if it's low ambient, as long as we have pressure in the system, and typically like for these compressors, we're using um, high pressure refrigerants, right? So you can use the system pressure it's still going to be above ambient and you can um, drain that oil down out into a proper container. And then charging it back, I mean, it's going to be the same process. I don't find that if everything, and I'll, I'll get to this asterisk here in a second, if everything is consolidated, then moving the oil is not really that much different than any other time and maybe the oil is a little thicker when it comes out or as you're trying to put it back in stuff like that just because it's colder um but for the most part it's not going to be that different now i think the kind of unspoken side of that question is that typically with low ambient what will happen is we have oil migration issues especially if the equipment has been sitting down and has not been online uh, and we've got a lot of cold conditions that oil tends to move to other parts of the system. So in that event where that oil has migrated, the only thing you can do is try to get the system online. If, if possible, try to let it run. Now, in some cases that oil may come, may not, you may not have enough oil left in the reservoir to safely run the compressor. In a scenario like that, what I do is I will add just enough oil to allow me to safely bring it online. And if I'm changing the oil anyway, then I will just account for that oil to be part of what gets discarded. Yeah, I'll put the enough oil in to get bring it online. And it doesn't typically take that long, it, it, especially if we are using a DX evaporator or something like that, where the refrigerant's in the tubes. It's not that hard to get the oil back now if we're dealing with more of a flooded design or a falling film design it's going to take more time because we've got to go through the adductor or the oil recovery system however they're choosing to do it we've got to allow that process to work for a little while and it's not as as fast of a process as like a, a dx evaporator where the oil heavily migrates to the evap <clears throat> but within five, 10 minutes of bringing it on, even with a fairly minimal load, uh, you can usually get that oil to start coming back. If it's migrated and you can get the circuit on, just try to get the circuit online for a, it, give it 30 minutes, give it an hour. It didn't have to have that terribly long, but enough to get enough of that oil back. Now, Let's say that you're in a situation where you can't bring the circuit online. That's just not an option, but it has migrated. I'm sorry to tell you, you don't have many options. Even if you did a recovery, okay? So that would be one of the alternatives. You recover the refrigerant down or out of the circuit, and then you can try to separate the oil from it later. Even if you tried to do that, part of the struggle is if that oil is migrated, it's likely going to, a lot of it's likely going to get left behind. Only some of it will probably get pulled out with the refrigerant, depending on, depending on the circuit and the design. Okay, so depending on that, only some of it's going to come out. A lot of it's still going to be in there. So your oil change effectiveness is still going to be pretty minimal. And you add all the work of having to pull the charge out just to try to separate the refrigerant from the charge, right? Um, like that's a lot of work in, in the process. It's not easy. So if that is your scenario, in my opinion, the best thing you can do is just wait for, wait for an opportunity where you can bring that compressor online. 
and you can actually run it. If you can run it with a load on it, that's even better. It'll help get that oil back faster. Um, but you just gonna have to wait till you can run it. You don't have many options. It's it's migration is a bitch, and it gives us all hell. But it's just it's part of what we have to work on. So may not be the answer you were hoping for, but I hope that it is helpful. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've I've committed. I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can. Uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given.